today I thought I would talk to you about how you can start your own business. Whether that's a side hustle or something you are looking to do full time, I want to share with you my journey in starting the business and give you some strategies for starting your own. Hello, this is the Looking After Your Pennies YouTube channel and I am Charlotte Jessup. Today, I want to share with you my story about my business and how I took it from a, an idea in my head to something that is paying my mortgage, that my family are living off of, and is I'm hoping it's going to make me about £10,000 in the next six weeks, which feels incredible because I started making it from my bed in the like in the dead of night and now it's something that is making me more money than I've ever earned in a single month before. So that is quite exciting and I want to share it with you today. My story, so looking after your pennies is my business. This is what I do full time now. But it wasn't always my job. So I was a teacher for 10 years and I loved it for most of the time um, and I had this idea after I had my kids that I wanted to create a business that meant that I could be at home more, I could work flexibly and still provide a decent income. Now this needed to be something that I could do around them and something that would be able to be kind of like location independent and that location independence became a much bigger factor later on as my kids got older and they started going to school we started thinking about this idea of traveling and now I very much want my business to be something that can come with me if we ever decide or if we're ever allowed to go traveling again so it was just an idea I'd always been interested in money and talking about money and I wanted to do something more. So take that into a bigger platform and rather than consuming the content that I saw, turn it into something that I could give back and contribute to. So I started looking after your pennies.com back in 2018. So it's nearly three years old now. And it's just grown from there. I've got my social media channels. There's Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest, and TikTok, Facebook. All of these social media channels, I've got a podcast and now this YouTube channel too. And this was a side hustle. This was a side hustle for the first 18 months of its life uh, and it made me smaller amounts of money. I think the first payment I got was £15. I think in my first money earning month I made a total of £60 and then it's grown from there. And like I say, I think next month I might earn around £7,000, which is pretty exciting. So it has grown a lot and I want and I want to inspire you and give you some step-by-step -step strategies to start your own business. It doesn't have to be a blog, it doesn't have to be a website, it can be any sort of business you like, the steps are the same. So the first thing you need to do is decide what sort of business you want. So think about your lifestyle. Think about why you want to start this business. Is there a particular skill that you want to develop? Is there an area of your current work that you really want to do more of? Are you looking to fit it in around family? Have more time? Is there a, a passion, a hobby that you want to spend more time doing? Or do you want the freedom to travel? Do you want to go off and do things? Or are you happy to stay where you are? All of these things contribute to deciding the type of business that you want to be. So for me, I always knew that my business had to be digital based. It was all gonna be online. I needed to be able to grab a laptop, take it with me and go anywhere. Whereas you might be happy with handling, say, physical products because that will leave you tied to a particular area. But that really, depends on what you want. If you like working with your hands and making things, maybe you're into pottery or sewing or knitting or floristry, then that could be your business as long as you understand the consequences of that sort of business and it fits into the kind of lifestyle that you are trying to create. You also need to think about what sort of income you hope to make from this. So some businesses are very much defined by the market. So I think about an example of this is maybe tutoring. So if you decided to go and be a full-time tutor, there are prices in the market that you have to charge. So for example, if you wanted to be a math tutor, something I did for a while, I was charging around the kind of like 30 to 35 pound per hour mark. And obviously there's only a fixed number of hours in the day. And if you're doing tutoring, it also has to be around school time. So that limits it even more. 
So there's going to be essentially a limit on the amount of money that you can make from that industry. Whereas if you are looking at something like a, a blog or a website, Essentially, you can keep creating content at the same pace, but more and more people will see it and you start to make more and more money. So it's scalable. So you have to think about the sort of income you want and how you're going to make that income. You also need to consider the amount of time that this business might take up. So if you're making, you know, beautiful handmade pottery cups or whatever it is, then those are going to take you time. And are you going to be able to sell those for the right price point? And is that the sort of money you're going to want to make? If you're looking to take this business into like your full time job, your main source of income, are you going to be able to make enough of these in the time that you have to get the income that you need to leave your other job? So all of these are different considerations and things that you will need to take in mind when you're deciding the sort of business that you want to create. So number two is looking, once you've got a rough idea of the sort of business that you want to make, you then need to look at what maybe are the gaps in your knowledge? What things are holding you back from actually starting this business? Do you need to figure out how to make a website? Do you need to learn some basic accounting? What gaps are there? And what are you going to do to plug those gaps? Where can you get that information? It could be something as simple as a YouTube video, or perhaps you need a mentor or a coach to work you through some of these things. You basically need to find the gaps in your skill set that would hold you back or stop you from starting that business and take action to fill those gaps so there's nothing holding you back. You might also want to reflect on what you actually do know and how you can utilize that to really get you off to a good start. So if it's a craft and you're really good at making the products and that's your passion and that's why you went into the business, then go full out, make some of the best stuff. Maybe do a few tutorials about it and really lean into your skills and expertise. Although you might not know how to market these things or how to put them on social media in the right way yet, really do the things that you know well and then you'll be able to use these resources and materials later on to help you sell your products and make your business a success. So number three and the third step is to think about what resources or infrastructure do you need? So for me and my blog, I needed a domain name and I needed a website and a laptop, which I already had, so that was fine. So I just needed these resources so that I could get started on my business. Now you might need a website as well, which is fab, so you can get started on those things today. If you wanna start a blog, then I've got a great post that I will drop in the description, so you can click on that if that's something you want to start. If you're looking to go into like floristry, for example, what tools do you need? What resources do you need? Do you want a decent camera or a good phone at least to take good videos and shots so that you can sell these on Facebook or Instagram or something like that? So what resources and infrastructure are you gonna need to actually get this thing off the ground. So start by making a list. You don't need to have all of them when you start, but you need to have enough that you can get going. And you might need to think about how much it's gonna cost to buy those things to set you off. So if you're a plumber and you wanna start your own plumbing business, have you got your own tools? What tools do you need? Are there any materials that you're gonna need as a basic set? You know, like those little bits and pieces, you know, do you, do you need a bag of washers? You know, or those little bendy copper things? I don't know. You, you know, if you're a plumber, hopefully you know. But think about the things that you might need to get you started so that you are starting off from a good place. Now, hopefully by this point, you have your business idea. So I'm not saying you need to get there straight away. Like if you're watching this video and you still don't know, reflect on the last three points. And then hopefully you will get to this place where you have an idea of the sort of business you want to do, the area that you want to go into. And then take that idea and make action, like do something, take action, do it. And actually take those first steps to making your business into something tangible. So your fourth step on this is to actually set your business up. So think about setting up the website, finding an area in your house where you can actually make these things or an area that you can work in, buy some of the resources, buy the materials and put some of these things into place. You could spend ages thinking and deciding and you know going, oh, maybe that's not the right idea. Maybe this is the right idea. But actually trying it 
and tweaking it as you go, pivot, learn, as you learn more things, go down a different route. That's how Looking After Your Penny started. I would love to show you kind of like the earlier versions of the website um, so you can see how far it has come to where it is now. But you will go through this process, but you just need to start setting up your business. Get it out there, start doing things, start getting it seen. You might also want to consider some of the more boring elements like setting up your accounts, registering as self-employed, getting any sorts of insurances that you might need to cover your, cover your particular line of work, uh, any sort of registrations to particular memberships that mean you are safe and legally able to practice whatever it is you do. You might also want to think about trademarking your name or your products, whatever it is that you're getting into, to make sure that nobody takes those things away from you. And then the final point, number five, is to create a plan for growth. So by the time you've been through the last four steps, you'll have a business, it will be out there, but you want to spend some time actually working on your business so you can get caught up in the what do I do next you know like oh I've got to make this thing I've got to make that that thing but where is your business going so you need a business plan you need a plan for growth and this doesn't have to be tricky or difficult it just needs to be a I want to be in this place in two years time so what do I need to do to get there or how can I get seen by more people where can I put my staff where there might be a different audience that could actually see what I'm doing So start putting yourself out there. Think about what's the next thing to grow your business? What do you need to do? Is it marketing? Do you need to start using a different social media platform? Do you need an email list? How are you gonna reach people that you haven't reached before? So start creating that plan and then follow through on those steps to actually make it happen. So starting a business can feel like a scary thing. And actually you just need to start taking the steps, start doing something. Little actions such as thinking about the sort of business that you want, doing some learning, getting yourself educated, and then actually putting some of these things in place, buying the resources that you need, creating a website, start talking to make maybe get some business cards when business cards can be a thing again and we can actually hand people stuff without having to disinfect it so think about these little things how you can get your business out there what it's going to look like how it's going to serve you and just start working on it so thank you for watching this video today if you like this video and you want more money saving money making business investing tips and ideas then please hit that subscribe button so you can go back watch all my other videos and you'll get all of my future videos ping up on your youtube page and leave me a comment what's your business what's your business ideas share your ideas with me and we can have a little conversation about it and where you should go next in the comments and hit like as well you know this was a great video so i would love it if you could hit like and just give me that little bit of love And don't forget to check me out on my other channels. I'm on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest. I've got a podcast and I've got my website too, lookingafteryourpennies.com. So thank you for watching today and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.